So we've talked before about how EQ can be used to manipulate energy and balance in your mix, but it can also be used to create moods out of nowhere. Uh, producers will use this when they write their, write their music, write their tracks. They'll use EQ to take frequencies away or open up frequencies to create the sense of tracks going down to then bring you back up. That going down and coming back up is exciting for the listener and the audience. Now, as a DJ, we can actually use EQ to go into sections or go into moods of the atmosphere coming down, even when the track isn't actually doing it itself. Um, by taking the frequencies away, we actually suck the attention back on the crowd. So if you're playing in a club and you start taking away the top and the mid frequencies and you've just got that rumbling bass, bass line in the background, it kind of tells people that something's happening and it's a great way for you to introduce tracks in a bit more of an interesting and different way to say, waiting for the end of the track to then mix it in or actually waiting for other sections of tracks where the mood naturally comes down because that's part of the track. You can create these moods and these environments from nothing. So let's have a look now. I'm gonna go and show you a loop on a track. It's quite a busy part of the track and just take away those frequencies just so we can show you how it feels. So now we've just got that nice grumbling bass line in the background and it kind of feels like the track is going into a transition or a bridge section or even just coming towards the end of the track. It feels like it's moved on when actually it's still on the peak part of the track. So this, is, this sounds great in clubs. When you take away those bass and high frequencies and you're just left with that really warm rumbling bass line in the background, it just creates a bit of excitement, a bit of drama, and then it's a good opportunity for you then to bring in something which is I guess got a bit more mid and high range information, then it's just a nice variation to what, what would be another pretty straightforward mix. This kind of goes opposite to what we've done previously. With the outgoing track, we've typically looked to take away the energy by taking away those baseline frequencies. So now we're actually doing the opposite. We are intentionally leaving in those baseline frequencies and bringing in the next track almost singing or playing with the mids and the highs over that, over those baseline frequencies. So if we look from the top of the mixer, it's gonna look like this. We've got the lows all the way up, mids and highs off on our master track. And then we've got the incoming track with the mids and highs on and the lows off. So let's have a look and see what that sounds like in an example. So this is actually the peak part of this track. So I'm gonna use the EQ uh, mids and highs to take, take them away to make it feel like the track is going somewhere. So that was an example there. So what I did is I actually left the bass line in rumbling for quite a long time there, just where we had that nice a cappella bridge kind of section. And then just as this was about to lead into its build again, that's when I took the bass line out because I wanted to leave a bit of space where there was no bass line playing before this drops. Because if, we've, if there's no bass line playing going into a drop, 
the, the, ch the contrast of no base to base is what excites us about the drop. So I wanted to leave a bit of time where we couldn't hear the bass line rumbling on in the background, allowed a bit of space for this track to build naturally and go into its drop. So like I said, this is a really good way of grabbing the attention of the crowd, telling them that something is happening because you're taking it in a direction that the track was not intended to go in. Really good to play acapellas over the top of this. Um, and again, just to create that sort of live edit feel. We're gonna go on to acapellas later in the course, so don't worry about um, if you're not comfortable doing acapellas for now. But um, go ahead and try and find two tracks which this works well with. Typically it works well with bass heavy tracks because obviously you need that bass line to cut through even when you're taking out the mids and the highs. Depending on what you listen to at home, you may not have heard those low frequencies, but uh, in the room here and definitely in clubs, you're really gonna feel it. Um, so don't worry about that again too much as well. Um, and just try and find other nice tracks that have got maybe nice vocal bridge parts or other sort of melodies that you can bring in over that rumbling bass line and just try and, just try and find a nice balance for them to, to sit and work together and just get practicing with getting used to using those EQ bands in almost the opposite way as we've talked about so far in the fundamental part of the course.